Welcome back to Echo Ridge and another episode here in our farm series. Today, we of course have some more problems. Starting with, what are you doing, little guy? How did we end up getting smooth hatches in here? The stone hatch only has a 0.2% chance of laying a smooth hatchling. Those are not very good odds. Congratulations, little buddy. You've defied all the odds. It does mean, though, I'm going to have to start making omelets out of all of your eggs. The big story today is an effect from our wonderful water system, because we are experiencing some minor power difficulties. Something to do with the eight thermo aqua tuners and the fact that we're chewing up all this natural gas as soon as it comes into our power brick. And that's even with all of these hydrogen generators running and all the steam turbines. Each one of these steam turbines is giving us 575 watts. So today we're gonna go look for some more power. We had plenty of access to power when we had this geode full of natural gas, but it finally ran dry, which also means we can clean all of this up at last. Now, long-term power is definitely not gonna be an issue. We have plenty of oil reservoirs, three over here, a couple over here, I mean, they're absolutely everywhere on this map. So a petroleum boiler with petroleum generators absolutely solves all of our power problems. But I wasn't planning to get into oil and petroleum yet. And this is besides the point that we're gonna have plug slugs on the colony and we have more natural gas geysers. And of course, in my opening monologue, I realized I had deconstructed this geode and all the gas pumps started grabbing all the polluted oxygen and everything else around it which is now being fed to our natural gas generators. That's a big oops. We'll split the pipe here and then just let everything vent. Okay, it's not that big of a deal. So what I think we're gonna be doing today is grabbing the power from this natural gas geyser to help offset the natural gas we're getting from right here. But we can also make this situation a lot better. And that's by using the wonderful power control station. Now the big disadvantage of the power control station is one, you have to put all your power sources inside of a power plant, and two, well, it requires refined metal. But refined metal is not gonna be an issue because we have access to the iron volcano and a gold volcano, which means we're gonna be getting an infinite supply of those metals, so we'll have no problem feeding them to the power control station. Now we could try to squeeze all of these steam turbines into one power plant, but I don't think it's possible considering the power control station is actually four high. So we need to split this into two. So I think I'm gonna take this steam turbine here and slide it down, which means I need to slide all of these down. No big deal, all right. It also means this place is gonna get a lot hotter for a minute while we build these rooms out. Now to start making a room, I'm gonna to have to figure out a new joint connection here in order to close the room off. I think this might work here, but we're gonna have to bring that wire back around in a different way. So for a few minutes, we're gonna lose the power from the steam turbines as well. Now this is gonna be really ugly because I don't have a lot of options of where to put the heavy walk conductive joint plate. So it's just gonna have to go something like this. Yeah, it's bad, I know, but I really don't have a choice. Unless I wanted to bring the heavy watt through here and run it down the bottom this way. But as it stands right now, the negative decor in this area is not too bad. But as soon as you look at the decor over by the heavy watt wire, you get to see that you don't want the dupes around that. Even though the heavy watt conductive wire is a little bit better than the standard heavy watt wire, the decor hit is not good at all. So I prefer not to have it wherever the dupes are running and they go through here all the time. So I think this is gonna be the play even though it is definitely an eyesore. Now all we have to do is add the couple of power control stations, fix where these pipes are coming out, and voila, we now have two power plants. Now even though we do not have the iron volcano or the gold volcano tamed yet, we know we're eventually going to do it, so I don't mind activating iron here. And when Ghost Rider finishes giving the steam turbine an NG's tune-up, we'll end up with a 50% bonus to power output, which will bring the wattage that that generator is providing way up, and when we do all six of them, it might even be able to start building the heat back up here because remember the heat is a sort of thermal battery for the steam turbines. Because the only reason the steam turbines are running right now is because, well, the batteries are empty. And all of them are connected to this smart battery here, which says, do not turn on unless we are less than 20% power. So while that won't have an effect on how much natural gas we're able to save, because the natural gas generator is set to 90-60, 
which means we still are going to use all the natural gas before we start tapping into this giant steam battery's worth of power. But we'll be able to directly tell, based on the temperature in this sauna, how much power we're saving. Now, it does fluctuate because we do have a lot of machines in here generating power, so what might be a better way of telling is looking at the last five cycles where this steam turbine's been running 95% of the time. We'll check back in a little bit and see if that efficiency has gotten any better. Even though I really don't think it's going to be enough juice because all of these thermal aqua tuners need to be running flat out, and right now they aren't, so they're gonna gobble up the power that they're given. But now I need to find out where those metal volcanoes are and put a tamer on one of them, because I don't want to end up running out of the refined metals. Now, it would take a while, because those NG tune-ups do not take a lot of refined metal, but I still want to be prepared in any case. Plus, I like building tamers. All right, here's the gold one here. Where is the iron? I always do this. I'll have colonies and just completely forget where everything is. Okay, here it is. So the question is, which one do we tame? Well, considering this one's way over here and this one's right here, we'll start with this one. I am also getting prepared to get in and tame this geyser. First, I'm starting with a little liquid lock, and I just realized I shouldn't have built in here yet. What we can do is fill it with bricks, back it up, and then we'll be able to drop some liquids in here, and all that gas will go away. And now we're getting more pain because everybody's peeing their pants. They're peeing their pants because our bathroom system ran out of water, because the water sieve was out of power, so all the extra polluted water went right to the tree and the thimble reed. Oh yeah, just keep making it rain. I mean, there's pee in the refrigerators. To fix this for now, I'm just gonna connect this whole thing into the main pump. What happened now? Oh, that's great. Our liquid pumps are out of power too. Well, dupes, sorry about it, but it's time to start running on the wheel. I will connect these to a smart battery as well and put it on something like 9010, and that will at least help keep the lights on. Even with all five dupes running, we're still not making a dent in the required power. The reason why everything went from bad to worse is because the temperature in here is down to about 130 degrees, which means our steam turbines are providing less power than before. So I really need to get a moving on this natural gas thing. Okay, things have gone from bad to worse. We're not creating any oxygen anymore, which means they can't get out. And if they can't get out, they can't get up here to natural gas. Yeah, Houston, we have a problem. Some dupes are probably not going to appreciate this because I'm going to let them out without suits. And they are invariably going to end up in the sauna. Oh, especially considering I asked them to run on the wheels. Yeah, let's cancel that, shall we? So what I really need to do is put in a door. Ooh, I can put it right there. That'll actually look pretty good. I need to put in a door as soon as possible. That way I can prevent any of the duplicates from getting inside. I should probably also turn off steel production. That way Ghost Rider will go home. Oh dear goodness, the stress is horrible. Patrick Gordon here is having a great cry. You know, sometimes you've got to. And all that stress is being caused because the dupes are peeing everywhere, which means they're walking in it and no sulfur. You can take off the suit. Oh, there's more pee. I guess the lesson I'm learning in all this is don't over exceed your available power because it can have huge impacts on the rest of your colony. But the good news is I have this lock finished. I'll be able to get in there, put in a quick gas pump to start siphoning everything out and then I'll tame it properly. But that way all this natural gas can help by going to get everything back online. And I'm also gonna do something I should have a while ago and just disconnect all the thermo aqua tuners from the grid. Yeah, we won't have as much progress on cooling the salt water, but quite frankly, anything's better than what we got right now. And look at that, the pumps have started working again. And with this door finished, I can make sure no more dupes go in there, and we should be okay. Disaster averted. I don't know what to tell you. Look, this is professional level gameplay at its best. I'm also putting down that quick gas pump, and I'm going to run this all the way down here and it'll just join up with the existing line, which I think is a very clean implementation. I suppose I gotta make the rest of this insulated as well, even though eventually we're gonna be going up through here. For now, it'll just go through the liquid lock. Well, that's great. Somebody peed in the brine tank. Let me see if I can mop that up. If polluted water was heavier than brine, it would have dropped all the way to the bottom, and then I could have mopped it up there, but sadly, it looks like polluted water is lighter than brine. Now I think eventually we'll be able to tie this area in with another power transformer. 
over on our right side of the spine. But for now, we just need to find a quick power solution. And this will do just fine. Don't worry, dupes. We've almost made it. Soiled britches will soon be a thing of the past. Maybe. Hopefully. Since I don't have much else going on in the colony, I figured I'd work on this hatch ranch just a little bit. Starting by putting down some mechatronics engineering things. First, the auto sweeper, because it'd be great for the auto sweeper to be able to pick the igneous rock out of the storage bin and put it in the critter feeder once we get, you know, caught up on tasks. But I'm also thinking about transporting the eggs around. And it got me thinking, is an evolution chamber really out of the question? I need to know what your thoughts are, so please let me know in the comments below. Alas, we have gas! And yet, dupes are still peeing everywhere. Why are we doing this, Glenn? Because you don't... Because you have a suit on, okay. That's understandable. Ghost Rider, what's your excuse? Because apparently we're still not providing enough power. Well, actually, this could have been the very beginning when it started pumping. Notice that the packets are getting larger. And we're even starting to backfeed a little bit. So soon we should also be backing up into the tank. And with the natural gas generators running, we should be generating a bit more heat. And we're starting to get oxygen in the suits. So let me go ahead and re-enable this building. All right, I think we're out of the storm, except we went from 5K worth of pressure in here all the way down to 1600, just that quickly. Oh, wow. This entire time, the water sieve hasn't had power because apparently there was something right here. Oh, this is the poke shells all the way back from the last episode. When I removed the poke shells, I must have done a regular deconstruct and taken the power lines with us. Way to go, pro-level gamer. This area is soon going to be vacuumed out. We're going to take advantage of that and start building out the pump and everything that's going to stay with, with the natural gas geyser. We also have this natural gas geyser over here, although it is dormant right now. I think we'll set this one up as well. Hopefully it'll stay dormant for just a few minutes and it will tie in perfectly from way over here. Go down the power spine, something like this. And we already have power conveniently located. Okay, this is bad. Apparently there was sand up here. And when we built these insulated tiles, well, it dropped and so did everything here. Unfortunately, there's now a plug slug in here, which means we're about to have hydrogen and polluted oxygen head right over to our natural gas generators. When it rains, it pours, folks. So what we're going to do is put a high pressure gas vent right here and vent everything out of here. Once, of course, we get cleaned up and it's sealed. And then I'll reconnect it to the main line. And I'm going to be doing the exact same thing down here. After analyzing this geyser, it looks like it's just now starting to erupt. So we just finished in time. But the problem is I really need to get it vacuumed out before it erupts. And we've only got 48 seconds, so that's not going to happen. So now we're just going to let the pump take whatever it wants, polluted oxygen or natural gas, and throw it into the sauna. How do you have no power? With that disaster averted and pretty much behind us, I mean, did it really even happen? No one knows. I'm gonna try something I haven't done before and I'm gonna put a liquid lock on the inside of the tamer. I'm gonna be able to do this by using water and having the duplicates come inside. Eventually, this whole place is gonna be filled with steam so I could let the lock destroy itself. I dug out the wrong tile again. Well, time for ye old coal temperature shift plate trick. For those of you who've never seen this, coal turns into refined carbon at 276 degrees. So as soon as this iron volcano erupts, the coal temperature shift plate will flash into a tile of refined carbon. And this happens because the temperature shift plate is 800 kilos. Now, the reason why we're doing this, of course, is to get some of that refined iron so we can start feeding it to our power stations and making it into steel. But there's another good advantage of these sort of tamers, which, by the way, this is the first time I've used two steam turbines to do it. I normally like to use three, but I like to keep working on our methods. But the other reason is the power that it's going to generate. Yeah, there'll be a thermo aqua tuner in here, but the thermo aqua tuner is only going to be responsible for keeping these steam turbines cool. So it's not going to run very often at all. But it also means I need to get the power spine to it. And right now, our power spine doesn't run up the side of the map far enough. And I can't just drop all this because that'll end up in a big mess. Well, I guess I could do something like this. And then when I drop it, it's not going to matter. And then we can just dig all the way over. And then we'll be able to extend the heavy wet wire all the way down. There it goes. It's starting to erupt. 
Getting very hot. And there's our tile. All right, not too bad. It's only 200 degrees in some spots. Why is Deox still sitting in here? It says they're hungry. They're not stuck. Is this your idle time? Oh, I see what's going on. Deox is actually analyzing the volcano. But because the tile popped, it sort of interrupted the animation of them analyzing it. But when they finished, now it says analysis pending, and I don't think they're going to be able to get the errand because it's unreachable. So, second burst, same as the first. And just like that, we have it analyzed, and our temperature shift plate's not going to be done in time. It's going to be okay. We have our wonderful liquid locked down, so it's time to seal it up so we can vacuum it out. It's glorious, I know. Now, I would have loved... That doesn't really need to be insulated, does it? Of course, if I use a regular tile, it'll look really ugly. Now, I didn't want to put the battery up here. I wanted to put it in here. But that would have required vacuuming in a heavy watt conductive joint plate. But that juice doesn't seem to be worth the squeeze. After all, the battery doesn't produce that much heat. So it won't be too big of a deal. Then we'll do our standard thermo aqua tuner setup. Put the bridge in. Liquid pipe thermo sensor right here. The loop will come in through here. Go up. And then out through the bridge. Directly back out. We'll use some radiance here. I will bridge down the steam turbine coolant. That way the radiant liquid pipes have more surface area. And easy peasy. Now unfortunately, this line here is at 1920 watts. And it's coming from all the way over here. So I'm not going to be able to use it. But I will be able to use a power transformer over here. The question is, do I leave the power transformer over here? Or since I already have a heavy watt conductive wire, do I just put it over here? I'm going to keep it clean and waste a ton of materials in doing it this way. And after some ugly bridging, it'll look something like that. Next up is the mechatronics equipment. We're going to start with the auto sweeper. Once this is all vacuumed out, I'll put a conveyor loader in here. I don't love the positioning of this thermo aqua tuner now that I've done it. But I don't want to put the conveyor loader over here as the temperature might spike. Eh, let's do it anyways, except we'll make it out of steel. I'm going to use steel rails right by the volcano at the minimum just in case it gets hot enough to start melting things. Then try to figure out a nice good loop. And I'm gonna try something for the very first time with this cooling loop, because I don't think we need a large debris chiller. I think one tile might be good enough. So I'm gonna put an aluminum tile here and extend the cooling loop through it. And then I'll have the rails go right through it before it gets dropped off. And then by using a timer sensor and connecting it to the vent, I can have that vent open for one second once every half cycle i don't know we'll see based on the temps any day gas pump any day so i've uncorked the iron volcano and now we have a bunch of really hot refined iron the question is can i get enough water in here as quickly as possible so it'll turn all that water into steam and enough steam to where the iron volcano is not able to spike the temperatures beyond the point of any of this equipment so i'm going to take our main water line right here extend it all the way up and then drop it right in through the steam turbine's exhaust. But before we can do that, I need to make sure that everything in here is completed. And I think the last thing is a thermo sensor right here. The thermo sensor is going to let the steam turbines know when they have to be running. And that way we can sort of conserve power here too. Which will enable us to backfeed our power grid with all the power the steam turbines are creating. I think I'm also going to move some of this iron out. Yeah, it's really, really hot, but I can't deal with... 1.3 tons of iron already. Oh, if I do that, the dupe's gonna walk right through this water and it's gonna flash the water. And before that even happened, it looks like we ended up with some oxygen in here. So I'm just gonna go back to the drawing board. This idea is cute and all, but I don't think it's very realistic. So I'll just put a little bit of oil right here and then I don't have to worry about the steam at all. And I know this is probably a bit sacrilege, but I think we're gonna be using water for our coolant. Not because it's a good idea, but rather just because it's so convenient. I don't have any other water around here. Oh no, not again. Not again. We can do this. 40 seconds. Please hurry, dupes. Please hurry. It's about to flash all this. Well, might as well cancel it now. Here we go. Here comes the steam. Wonderful. I'm literally waiting for just one more tile of oxygen to head on over to the gas pump. Because now we are on a clock. We have 50 kilos worth of pressure, which is great, but this place is going to keep heating up, which is going to cause the steam turbines to turn on, which would be fine, except for the fact they have no coolant. They'll overheat, and then everything inside will overheat. And bingo, I think we did it. Can we please seal this thing up and be done with it? 
I'm also going to add a little bit of water back in here. I'd like a full 50 kilos, and I think that'll about do it. We have our wonderful clean water coolant in here. It's not the best, but it'll be just fine. The last thing we're waiting for is the power transformer to be put in. Look at this amazing stuff. We actually have power and a backlog of natural gas. And that's because this little guy started erupting, even though this one and our original down here are still dormant. Three natural gas generators, not bad. All right, everything's clean up here, so I think it's a better opportunity to be able to show you how this is gonna work. What I can do is select iron. Oh no, how did that happen? Luckily, we can fix it from inside. And with all of our iron loaded on here, it'll dump off its heat in here, which will end up taking a lot of the heat out of it. Yeah, sure, there'll be some hot stuff right here, but it's gonna sit in this tile for long enough to make sure it gets down the temps. Already you can see this 20 kilo packet of irons down to 35 degrees. And as a quick test, even though this isn't standard because this one's 400 degrees, we can reset the timer, which will open the chute, allowing one piece of iron out. We'll pause it and look at that. The iron pieces in seconds already down to 48 degrees. And that has to do with the fact that the 20 kilo packets are so small. So I think we're gonna reduce this to say, one packet every 70 seconds? Actually, after doing the math, it looks like I can reduce it all the way down to, say, 58 seconds. And I got that by taking the size of every clump, which is 20,000 grams, and dividing it by the average output of 349 grams, and you get about 57.3. Which means if I take one piece of iron out of this chamber every about 57.3 seconds, I'll be perfectly optimized to always make sure there's going to be iron on these rails and plenty of heat in this chamber. I mean, look at this. The iron's already down to 22 degrees. I think in the past I've used like little debris chillers and metal tile strips on the side. You don't need it. You need one tile and that's it. I'm going to call this one a win, even though building it was a little, uh, we'll say abstract. For those in the cheap seats, we'll go through some of the overlays. There's our plumbing. Here's our electrical, here's our automation, and I don't know, here's our decor. We do have the thermal sensor set on above 200, and the coolant set on above 20. So the thermal aquatuner is not going to run until the coolant needs to be cooled back down to 20 degrees, and the steam turbines are not going to turn on until it, A, we need power on our grid. We'll put it at a 90, what, 40? 90, 20 even? I think that's what the other ones are set on. Or unless it gets over 200 degrees in here, which I think is a good spot to make sure you don't break any of your equipment and we're still gathering power every once in a while. Now the question is, do I turn these back on? I mean, what's the worst that could happen? That's gonna do it for this episode. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And while you're down there, why don't you go ahead and like and subscribe. So until next time, much love, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.